the, the public having access there. Uh, I, I know that I'm not going to change. Uh, what I need now is to see what my alternatives are going to be because <coughs> I don't want to come back, present the same thing that I'm presenting tonight, and hear the same discussion. I'd like to really have a sense of, of what the board is going to do over this, uh, this public access deal. And, and I really think that's only fair to ask of you. Madam Chair, um, Ms. Lardner made the, the motion and, and uh, sort of at the request of the applicant uh, gave direction uh, as to what we're looking for. Uh, if the applicant doesn't want that direction, I certainly don't mind as the person who seconded the motion to remove the, that, uh, those suggestions uh, from the motion. So we now have a motion, as I understand it, simply to table to the August meeting uh, with the mutual consent of the applicant, but I don't know whether we have the consent of the applicant at this point. To just table the same discussion <coughs> for another month from now? Is that, is that what I'm hearing or what? That's the motion, yes. And yeah. Let me just ask a question. Um, is it the board's intent to require public access if the applicant ultimately chooses not to provide it? I, I recognize it may not be appropriate to respond, but is the I, I, let me rephrase I it. Is it the board? I'm not ready to answer that question now, but I don't. I'd be happy to pull the other board members if they're I mean, I'm, I, mean I'm, I, I, I certainly would, would welcome the opportunity to discuss it with the. Uh, Tom Leahy, um, you understand our position, I, I, I presume. Um, we don't wish to discuss it on anything beyond the merits of the ordinance provisions themselves as, as it reads. And I've suggested to you that the board uh, can choose not to apply the conditions. However, if, if, I, if, my, if, I, if the board is, is of the mind that it can impose that as a condition, uh, I need to know that. I, I think what, what I, my sense of the board, and I'll be happy to see if anybody else wants to chime in on this, is that the board is not of a single mind about this issue at this okay. point and would like to have the advice of uh, council before it uh, gets pressed too much further on it. But perhaps I'm uh, not speaking for uh, my colleagues here. Madam Chair, I, I would simply say that, that I'll, I'll stand fast on, on, on my request, and, and that is uh, either for public access, um, a fee, or uh, another proposal from, from the applicant, uh, which um, is sufficient as determined by the planning board, whether that involves another uh, adjacent parcel of land or, or future considerations for uh, access uh, over this parcel or, or uh, nearby parcel. I, I don't know. I'm leaving that up to, to the applicant. They simply asked for a direction. We gave it to them, and they didn't like the direction we gave. Uh, so uh, that's why I rescinded or second, seconded the, the rescind, uh, rescinding <laughs> of the, the suggestions. Um, and I'd just soon uh, get uh, forward with a vote. Uh, my, in the past, we have taken it to a vote, then asked for mutual consent. If mutual consent's not given, then we come back and we take a vote, um, typically either to accept or deny the, the, uh, the application. Let's proceed on that uh, in further discussion, Mr. Eichberg. No, I, I'd, like uh, I'd like to second what Steve just said. Um, I am in favor, generally speaking, of public access. I think this is a, uh, this is a complicated issue at this point on this particular uh, proposal and I would like to have more time to hear from council and uh, to send uh, give some direction to our town planner to give us more guidance on this particular issue um, there is there are many different forms that public access may take it does not have to be the dedication of a path through your property to the beach or along the beach it could be an offer to dedicate this parcel sometime in the future should the Greenbelt plan evolve to such a point where this might connect up with something that might be appropriate. 
Uh, there's just a lot of different options for us to consider at this point. But I would like to go on record in saying that I think we would be remiss in our duties as the planning board if we didn't take this opportunity, because this may only come around once in a lifetime for us. Um, this uh, piece of property is very important to the town of Cape Elizabeth, <coughs> and it's also very important to you. I can understand that. Um, but we have our job to do, and our job is to try to promote public benefits for the uh, people of Cape Elizabeth. And I just think taking an additional month to do so and considering what action that and what form that might take would be in our best interest. Can I just ask, um, I, I uh, obviously focused on some, some touchy issues. Um, are we at least in agreement that the issues that are, remain open for discussion and ultimate resolution are the, the general concept of public access under your provision 16.3.1J and the um, concept of recreation open space under 16.3.1Q uh, that the other items that I talked about, the concept of any further comprehensive management of the pond and wetland system, the further restrictions on the dune system beyond what is already as a matter of law, and um, I think that's really under natural features and scenic vistas, architectural style. But those are those are not issues anymore, or not not of significant magnitude as the the public access and the open space recreation issues. Mr. Cheney, I can appreciate the question. Um, I suspect that they're not of the same magnitude, that that is correct, but uh, I certainly would not say that they are totally off the plate at this point. Uh, but again, I would stand to be um, corrected if somebody else were to think that those would be discussed no further. I've said what I wanted to say about them, but I don't know um, if there's anything else to be developed. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't like to leave the meeting agreeing to disagree. Um, I don't personally feel that we've made much headway in coming to a, a decision on some of these, some of the issues we have, because they're technical and we can address them. But these issues have, we have essentially agreed to disagree on these things. Um, I, mean, I welcome the opportunity to discuss it with Corporation Council, but um, I hope that the board appreciates our position on this. I think we do, Mr. Cheney, and I, I'm sorry to have to try to move things along okay. at this point, but as I understand it, we don't have any issues on uh, in the subdivision review of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. We do have uh, J still on the plate. Uh, we don't have any question about uh, K, provided that you put a note on the plan. We don't have any problem with L, M, N. We may be discussing further O, P, Q, and R. Um, I believe that we don't have any further problems on uh, S, which is stewage disposal, because of the recent Dirty McVean letter. Madam um, Chair, I, I think that the plan should reflect uh, an additional 10-foot setback. Uh, Ernie's letter says that he, he's not willing to... Uh, ah. Correct. To, yes, uh, with the with the one open. Um, I think it's lot two. That. Right. Um, an Thank additional you. ten foot setback of the. Uh, yep. Um, that's T. Correct. That's the. Uh, it actually, it comes under S. S. Okay. Okay. And then the note on T would be um, as I'm required. Sorry, yes, water lines. Okay. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, I noticed in our letter from our uh, town engineer, he mentioned that the. Uh, Erosion control notes should be added to sheet five. Erosion sedimentation should be in accordance with the Maine sure. Soil and Water Conservation Commission Environmental Quality Handbook. Uh, oh, uh, is, the, is the current plans, are the current plans in conformance with that handbook? The erosion control? I device? believe as, as much as they're yeah. explicit, they are, but typically you put that note on to deal with the situations that you hadn't expected. I think it was an issue that, that the engineer suggested that, that the geotextile fabric application be a part of the plan, in other words, where the numbered soil is, that, that it shows that that's where it will be applied. And I, I see some nodding over here that that's we not a problem. problem. I, you well, know, you know, I've, already, I've already said it, Mr. Ratz. Yeah, I, I so understand we'll, that. We'll, we'll put everything on the plan, as the town engineer has said, over and over and over again. And, you know, once again, I hope this is his last comments. And We'll be more than happy to put everything on the plan and we will get the 
done. Submit them to you as quick as possible. Ms. Larder. I'd like to make, I think, a final comment for the applicant to consider. We're discussing a lot of the open space. To me, there's the, the issue of the open space or recreational deficiencies um, as pertaining to the subdivision residents and the issue of public access from the town. I think it's very distinct. One is a request, one other may be a requirement, and I'm not sure how I fall on that latter one. Um, I think you might examine the possibility of looking at your pond area as a possible um, place for public use, or should I say uh, common use, and perhaps there are mechanisms other than a homeowner's, if only mention in each deed that you have right to an area that you circle in, say, common area. I, th I think there might be mechanisms that you would not have to have homeowners maintain that. You might also look at the possibility of having some access to the dune area or the beach area limited strictly to those other three lots and and said such as a deed um, I personally think you could make a very strong argument for your satisfying that requirement if in fact that is a legal requirement we could ask something to think about any further discussion from the board I call for a vote on the um, motion by Ms. Lardner to table until the August meeting of the board with the mutual consent of the applicant. All in favor, raise your right hand. All, all opposed? The vote is uh, five. The vote is unanimous in favor of tabling. Do we have the mutual consent? We don't consent? have a problem with tabling. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next month. Stonegate Phase 4 request by CMS Inc. for final subdivision approval, a wetlands alteration permit, and permit for construction in a resource protection zone of Stonegate Phase 4. A 17 lot subdivision located off Stonegate Road, and we're looking tonight for application completeness in accordance with Section 16-2-4C of the subdivision ordinance. We have before us Mr. Rick Light, right? That is correct. Again, Madam Chair, before yes. I uh, <laughs> <laughs> look back. My, my schedule's off here. Yes, you're going to... I do have a little possible conflict. In first, I have to recuse myself from this issue. Thank you. Madam um, Chairman, as in the past, I also recuse myself from this application. So, excused. In your absence, I will appoint Ms. Lardner and Mr. Eichenberg one more time to serve as voting members. Uh, we have before us, <coughs> let me, if I can summarize just a bit, we reviewed the application by CMS, who has taken over a uh, previously in-process subdivision um, for application completeness. Uh, we went through a number of different items, and I'm presuming they're all pretty nearly, uh, hopefully, addressed, and I will let you take it from there, Rick. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll keep this brief in essence of time. 
Uh, after the last meeting, there were several minor items for application completeness, uh, the most outstanding being the issue of the letter of credit and financial capability. We had come to the last meeting thinking we had that in our hands and it slipped away from us. And uh, unfortunately, I must comment that at this time, we had expected to walk in with a letter of credit today. Uh, and due to some miscommunication with the bank, the applicant CMS will now be uh, pursuing a performance bond instead of a letter of credit. Performance bond, I understand, will be ready in four or five days through a bonding company uh, as proof of financial capability for the project. And we therefore understand that we cannot receive application completeness at this time, but I think at least while we're here, if I could just touch base on a couple of the other minor, uh, considering the housekeeping issues, uh, just to clear the air. Uh, there were several other minor things that we had talked about at the last meeting. One being the issue with the 15 acre parcel, which is uh, this area up here. I think in some of our previous communications, we referred to it as the 11 acre parcel, while well, the town has just gained four more acres. The parcel that uh, in this area here was, as you remember, ill-defined, and we agreed at the client's uh, behalf to prepare a plan and a deed designating that as open space to the town with the same restrictions and conditions as the other open space parcels. We have submitted that, a copy of that deed and plan to the town planner uh, for review and onto town council. Uh, the other issues, uh, some minor issues that were brought up by the uh, town engineer at the last meeting have been addressed, I believe, adequately at this point. And a issue of the uh, total project uh, cost estimate was updated uh, based on several of his comments. And we do have a, a minor question, I think more of a, I guess a comment than a question is, what has come up in discussing the cost estimate for the project is the new town requirement for uh, what I would call more as full-time on-site inspection services, which if you read between the lines in the, the engineer's letter and in the estimate we provided to the uh, town planner, amounts to a, a large sum of money on a project like this where uh, some, it came someone as a shock to us to have to do that. To, to make matters short, our bond estimate, our bonding amount will equal the estimate including the, uh, the engineer's inspection fees, etc. Or we would like to in the meantime discuss with the uh, town planner and possibly meet on the sidelines uh, with the highway superintendent to discuss exactly what those fees are expected to go towards when applied and uh, so that we have a clear understanding as to why those fees are so high and, and if they're necessary if they are they are if and as long as we have a clear understanding as to what we can budget our f our fees for for inspection services uh, may i interrupt you for just a moment i'd sure. like to address that that okay. fee was twenty thousand uh, dollars twenty roughly twenty thousand dollars based on discussions um with could i ask maureen to explain what that was i was I just remember I noting I assume it. you're referring to the construction monitoring? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's my understanding that, that the town adopted an amendment to the subdivision ordinance uh, several, I don't know how many years ago, um, in response to a problem they had had where applicants prepare and, uh, pay an inspection fee. Um, on some projects, an applicant would maintain very tight control on the quality of the work on the site. Uh, with other applicants, there would be almost no supervision of work on the site, requiring the town engineer to be on the site almost daily. And that was never intended to be the function of the town engineer or the ins and the inspection fees were never intended to cover those costs. Uh, the intent of that, that construction monitoring is to require a developer to have a monitor um, to maintain quality control, control on the site during all periods of significant construction and that's the way it's described. Uh, my understanding is that uh, you should have someone out there keeping a field log um, and if you can show that you've got someone who's doing that job and it is something that should be done, uh, if that's something that typically would be included in the costs of, mm -hmm. of developing the site anyway. Right. Uh, the other thing I, I would like to emphasize and, and this is often discussed with um, the town manager is that um, once you get over that hurdle of that significant period of very expensive construction, the town is usually uh, very amenable to reducing a letter of credit once that work has been done in a satisfactory manner. And um, it, that, that turnaround and reducing the letter of credit is very quick. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we understand the basis. We have, no, again, no problems in concept with, with the estimate as, as provided. And I've discussed that with the town engineer, with uh, Mr. Moore, and, and we're in agreement upon the, the cost estimates we provided. It's just more of a matter of, it just came to us as a shock that, it, we, that the total was as much as it was based on what they expect it to be. And we just would like to meet on the side maybe with the town to determine, uh, maybe with yourself and with Mr. Uh, Malley, the uh, public works director, just to, so that we have a clear understanding as to what those responsibilities may be and at what point the project, so the client can better estimate uh, uh, how those funds will be expended. I guess the, the final very, very minor housekeeping item is that if we discussed the entrance plan, which I, I don't believe is actually a checklist complete item, but something that we discussed providing a construction level uh, deep uh, plan to update our previous plan on the entrance, and that is in process and will be submitted very shortly. Again, it's my understanding that's not actually a technical che checklist complete item, but could be conditionally uh, attached to an approval of the project. But in, in all respects, we expect to have that completed and submitted shortly. Uh, I guess just one minor note on the, on the plan changes. At the last meeting, we brought the issue of the shoreland zoning, which I won't, again, uh, regurgitate what we talked about, but the plan has been changed to reflect several, two building envelopes, which uh, are modified slightly, as shown by this red line here. The plan that was revised rev uh, showed a 100-foot setback from the shoreland zone, which impacted lot 15. And the same thing on lot 10, the plan that was submitted to you for this meeting uh, reflects those changes. So the one we have is, is current? Is current and has mm -hmm. been approved or reviewed by the code enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. I believe those are the issues at this time. I had one, one thing that, uh, that stuck in my mind, and I thought we had talked about it, and I'm misapprehended whatever, which is the stop sign. We Where is it? We left the last meeting thinking we weren't going to provide it, that it really wasn't necessary. Well, that's what I thought too. Or some communication between us and the town engineer. We went ahead and provided it, and that stop sign will be right here at the end of Quartz Knob. Okay, you program. said you put it on the plan. I, I, I spent 10 minutes looking for it. I, I believe it's on the, on the plan Some profile. other plan, probably, profile. Somewhere. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, that is a Quartz Knob. That's not the little... The one that we no, it's not. Right. I'm thinking of the the one further down, right there. The Grace, one we Graystone Road. Where we changed the the con, um, the way the road mm -hmm. actually entered. Okay. Um, Maureen, I'm going to ask you if you would speak for just a few minutes and bring me up to speed on the status with reference to uh, the change in from a letter of credit, which I thought was going to be right here, it even says it was right here, vis-a-vis um, -vis an incoming performance bond as to where we stand right now. Well, um, when, when the applicant of a project changes, uh, the applicant can step into the approval process or the mm -hmm. review process for a project. Uh, the one area that the board can reach back into and, and relook over is the dem demonstration of financial and technical capability because that applies directly to the applicant rather mm -hmm. than the project. Um, in this case, this applicant has, has submitted information uh, addressing technical capability to complete the project. However, there has not been any submission to the board on the financial capability of the applicant. In the past, the board has accepted a variety of different mechanisms to demonstrate that one has financial capability ranging from a letter from a bank to a statement of quarterly earnings uh, to uh, in this case this particular applicant is suggesting that in lieu of any of any of that preliminary type of information they're going to step directly to the performance guarantee um, I assume the argument being that we can provide performance guarantee, therefore we have the financial capability to complete this project as constructed. Um, the problem is we haven't received that yet. We've received a form for a letter of credit that has no letterhead of any bank, so there really hasn't been uh, a real about to be signed performance guarantee submitted uh, for this board's review. The applicant tonight is, is stating simply that they're changing the format of their performance mm -hmm. guarantee. Um, typically the board will, will, or the town will accept um, most often letters of credit, sometimes escrow accounts, 
um, sometimes construction bonds. They all are just different forms mm -hmm. of a guarantee to the town that allows the town financial uh, backing to complete the project if the applicant is not able to. Does that answer your question? No. I, I didn't ask it right. I, I would just simply ask, Maureen, do you feel that the performance bond is, is a reasonable or sufficient uh, um, indication of financial capability? Yes. Okay. But that, that's, that's actually the final determination that is the board's. I realize. Um, my, uh, I'd be more specific. Um, what I'm getting at is that he is, the applicant is here for, uh, at this point, application completeness. And it would appear, for the most part, that the only thing that is missing is this. Is this sufficient to call it incomplete? If it can be, in, or can it be complete, subject to the receipt? Or not? That that really is the discretion of the board to make that okay. determination. Uh, th All right. Um, Madam Chair, I think we're also missing uh, a deed for uh, the transfer of uh, the parcel. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Dyer Pond parcel? I've, I've received that this evening. It has not gone to the board okay. yet. Okay. Um, Steve, do you have any other comments right now? No, I don't. Okay. Do we have other board comments? Um, just with respect to the financial capability, I think I might feel comfortable waiving that requirement as a matter of completeness, unless Maureen would want to convince me otherwise. With the um, caution to the applicant, if that were never appropriate, that might be grounds to deny the project. Certainly that we're not ignoring that, but I would love to discuss this project a little more instead of tabling it mm -hmm. again just to bring it up again. Well, that's my feeling, is that I'd rather get it going. Um, we've been sort of stutter-stepping along with this for the last year or so. Two meetings, uh, yeah. I, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I think that we'd be tickled if the board would, would waive that requirement and proceed on to either uh, we hope would be the possibility of final approval at the next meeting. Okay. There is one, one comment I would like to make, and it has to do with the structure of the ordinance in this town, um, which allows an applicant, upon approval of an application, to record a subdivision without presentation of a performance guarantee. The guarantee only has to be presented prior to construction on the site. Um, you may want to keep that in mind if, if if this moves forward and uh, financial capability is not demonstrated, the board may then uh, approve the project. At that time, it can be recorded. And you have yet to receive any demonstration that the project that has been approved w has any ability of being constructed by that applicant. Madam that's Chair. Just something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cannot we also, though, approve this project if that's appropriate with the condition that it not be recorded until a performance guarantee yes, is posted? Yes, mm -hmm. And I assume you would remind us of that if... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Tim, did you have something to say? You looked like you were ready to speak. Uh, I, was, I was nodding in agreement to oh, good. what he said, that I'd like to move this application along, and I don't think that... Uh, uh, I think that I'm willing to waive okay. that requirement well, at this time. Being in the move along mood, do we have a motion? With respect at least to applicant. There will be further discussion. I, th I think we're, we're well there. No? We motion. need a motion then. No. Someone else. <laughs> I have a board, uh, a board for the motion to consider. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion for the board to consider. The order that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented in the application CMS construction for final subdivision approval of Stonegate Phase 4, 17 lot subdivision located off Stonegate and Greystone Roads be deemed complete. Should we add the uh, public hearing to it? Uh, I'm going to separate that, I think. Yeah, I, I will leave it at that. Do we second? second? Uh, do we, should we add something now that it, it uh, not be recorded until now? Okay. Uh, I think that's uh, an issue of final okay. approval or denial. All right. All those in favor of approving of the motion is read. Opposed? And so that passes unanimously. We come to the next question of a public hearing. Uh, this particular project has been has had two public hearings that were well attended. Um, the folks from Stonegate came out and talked, as well as the folks from Cranbrook. Uh, 
uh, and it has not been very long since. A very, you know, I think it, that the just the fact that the time that uh, Recall Fleet um, took it over, which wasn't wasn't too long ago. My own personal feeling is that. Uh, oh, and adding to it, we have a letter from the president of the Stonegate Association. Um, stating how pleased they are that CMS has taken over the project. They've worked, and I know they've worked and done some other work in, the pro in uh, Stonegate, so they're familiar with it. I'd like to uh, poll the board on whether or not you feel we should have another public hearing. I'll start with you, Tim. Madam Chair, uh, would it be appropriate to ask if there's anyone in the room that would like to appear at a public hearing at the next uh, meeting of the planning board? Is anyone here for that purpose? We can ask that. Is there anyone here that would speak at another public hearing? I take it no. no I one. thought the camera was <laughs> 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 the camera not? No, she is interested in Rosewood. <laughs> <laughs> Saying we've had two public hearings? We've had two. We've had two, then um, I, would, I would be in favor of moving the project along without okay. a public hearing at this time. Let's you know, there's anyone that has any information that there needs to be another mm -hmm. public hearing. Judy Lardner? I don't think we have a need for a public hearing. Mr. Etzel? I concur. I agree. So there will be no public hearing. Uh, we can move along to maybe some substantive review. And um, again, we have already been through this, um, I think, twice. Mm -hmm. It seems to always get almost to the end, and it doesn't quite. Um, you must know this all by heart. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> this has been the most finely tuned subdivision. The pork chop lot's gone. Um, well, do we have any substantive review discussion? I, th I think we're pretty well uh, <laughs> whittled down to, to two issues, and one seems to be uh, in hand. We just simply haven't uh, looked at it, that being the deed, um, mm -hmm. and hasn't been reviewed. I take it uh, still needs to be reviewed by town council. Um, and the issue of financial capability um, is an issue that's strong enough, uh, in my opinion, um, to uh, be a, a requirement to, to have it in hand before final approval. Have another comment? Judy Wagner? Um, these are pretty minor comments. Um, I know we talked about using the, the uh, is it the southernmost entrance, the one that you show on the mm -hmm. plan as the construction entrance, and I know you've agreed to that. Is that on the plat? A note has been added to, and I, I can't tell you it's on the plat, uh, to the plans, on one of the sheets of the plans. I believe the construction sheet of the plans has a note added. Okay. Four, I as long as that's on there, it I would expect the that. Um, also, um, I know you've added a note to the plan that the applicant will mark the trails, and I assume any new trails that have to be constructed, there is some relocation. It's certainly the board's intent, I believe, that you construct them as well, and I want that to be clear on the plans. Is that correct? Because yes. I think to say you will mark them allows some movement there mm -hmm. if someone wanted to renege on constructing them, so I'd like to see that clarified. Um, this may be my fault, but I know we had discussed some what the comment of the town engineer that you needed to show limits of clearing at Mitchell Road and um, Stonegate Drive, and I had in my notes that you said that wasn't necessary, and for the life of me, I can't remember why that would be. Yeah, I'd like to address that. two of those comments. One is the clearing at Mitchell Road was, again, a DEP requirement, and the meeting prior to la the last meeting, I guess I believe it was, we discussed that, uh, in my feeling anyway, that the town engineer was suggesting that we place that as an additional note on the plan. However, that is a very uh, concise note within the DEP order that we must follow, and we, in, of course, intend to do that. We have added, we have indicated that rather than add that note to the plan, which I feel is inappropriate for recording plat in the registry, a um, minor detail like that, that we add that to the entrance design plan that uh, to be submitted to the, to the mm -hmm. Homeowners Association for review. Okay, I, as one board member, I, I fully expect to see the landscape plan of the same mm -hmm. caliber. I know there was some comment about not adding it to your packet, and I assume mm -hmm. that was for numbering reasons, not to have you re Exactly. I, I, my sense from the board was, and I hope I read the board right, is that we could submit that as a separate plan that would be 
uh, referenced in the approval of the project, however, would not be part of the actual plan set because it, it, it really, we've gone through the DEP process, they've referenced the plans, et cetera, and to add a plan to that, approved DEP plans becomes administratively very, very complicated. So this way we're free and clear of the DEP issues and yet we're satisfying their conditions and yours. As long as, I'm, is Maureen? Oh, I <laughs> couldn't see you. As long as you are comfortable with that approach that anything we act on, the landscape plan that we see is definitely part of our subdivision approval. Yes. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be on the same sheet as the other plans. Or, or stapled to it, it or I anything. I mean, it can be an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper that has yeah. sufficient detail to tell us what we need. Okay, as one board member, I would like to see more than an eight and a half and 11. I would like to see the exact <laughs> plantings you're proposing and the sizes and so forth. I would also like to see definitely the limits of clearing. I think we've been talking about roadway standards and one of the things we've talked about is clearing. And while I wouldn't presume to tell you to do other than the DEP has done, I would like to feel that we're approving a project that I feel comfortable with the clearing and that we are being very sensitive to that issue. Um, I think, I think that's it, and I certainly would I echo, I think what Steve said is I would like to see the performance guarantee completely in order before we approve this and know that it will be enacted, whatever the term is, before um, you go forth. With Again, in, in good faith, we had expected to be here tonight before you and I be able to waive a letter of credit and again, administratively things fell through, but we uh, ex fully expect to have one uh, enacted and in the board's hands within, within uh, a week. And so we expect that to be a done deal for the next meeting. Um, in regards to that, that plan item, uh, the plan we're preparing is, will be prepared by landscape architect and will be to uh, this very detailed standards and it will be a full size plan. Uh, number three on the trails, just to make clear, we did again add a note to the plan in, in regards to previous comments about marking the trails and the indications and the discussions we've had with the Conservation Commission is that we're not preparing a trail base, uh, bark mulch type trail, which becomes very expensive. We are clearing and uh, thinning to tr create a trail path system and mark that in accordance with the Greenbelt uh, plans up until, again, this issue of public access up until lot three, which they have reserved for future time and that will not be marked in this area here for the request of the Conservation Commission. I would just ask that whatever you're going to do, if you can very succinctly state that on the plans, whether you want to say we'll clear trails mm -hmm. or something. I'm not asking for elaborate. Whatever you've agreed to is fine with me. Steve Etzel? You're all set? Tim? You're all set? Well, I think uh, with that, we've had some discussion. Um, you'll come back next month. And oh, we don't have to make a motion, do we? Do we? Mm -hmm. To table? Okay. Sorry? Um, I wondered about that. Then, would you make a motion sure. to table, Steve? Sure. See if I can put this together. Get it better than last time around. A motion for the board to consider. Be ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of CMS construction for final subdivision approval of Stonegate Phase 4, 17 lot subdivision located off Stonegate and Greystone Roads be tabled until the regular August 1992 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Planning Board. Exquisite. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Right hand. Opposed? Passage unanimously. <laughs> see you next Thank you. We'll see you in a month. Yep. Our next order of business under old business, and it is our last tonight is the Tinsman Fitness Center request by Tom Tinsman for site plan review of the conversion of approximately 1,000 square feet of office space to a fitness center located at 349 Ocean House Road in accordance with site plan review of the subdivision ordinance section 19 to 10. Hello, Mr. Tinsman. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, I'd just like to start off by addressing some of the issues that were brought up in the uh, letter from Maureen Merritt to the board and to myself, as well as items that we discussed in the site walk about a week after the last meeting. In terms of the fencing 
before and between the two properties. We did a site walk and it was suggested at the site walk that the fence be extended beyond what was proposed at the last meeting. There was some discussion about it. Some members were not in favor of extending it. Some were. Uh, we had a representative from the house next door who was present as well as the tenants who were living at that house. And it was agreed at that time that potentially it might be a good idea to run the fence closer to Ocean House Road so as to be a buffer from the lights uh, mm -hmm. emanating from the sign as well as lights from cars turning into the driveway. We also stood where the fence should end and where it is proposed on the plan in front of you. And it was agreed at that time by the people present that that would not restrict the view of cars exiting the property. Uh, it has been mentioned as a possible suggestion that a traffic engineer come out and do a study um, to determine whether or not the site view is going to be uh, diminished. I'd like to suggest that it is not going to be diminished. The fence is going to stop short of blocking the view of cars exiting the property. Um, and the proposal before you is in response to what I felt the, the board members at the site walk were looking for. Um, in terms of the path, we also looked at the path that was on the last proposal. That path would have cut through a couple of sites that currently house bushes and trees and it was felt that that was probably not the best place to put a, a pathway. Looking at the site and, and being there, it was felt that the best place for the path is where it exists on your current plan in front of you. However, that path does lead right into a fence between my property and the school property. Although it is probably the best site, there is going to have to be something done there in terms of working with the school and getting permission to open up a gate there to allow that pathway to, to walk through. In looking at the letter from T.Y. Lin, the engineers, in terms of getting spot elevations and this type of thing, I think it's unnecessary. I think the members who were able to come out to the property can see that there's a general grade downward there. walkway is in the parking lot of the school so I'd like to encourage that traffic to come into the property. In terms of the floor plan it was suggested that possibly I should put together a floor plan that measures all the openings and shows handicap accessibility. It is my intent to make the property handicap accessible. I think it's in our best interest as a business as well as in the best interest of, of uh, handicapped people. Uh, I get a sense though that that is a function of the building inspector and anything that is allowed to be built there can be held with the condition that it be handicap accessible and work with the building inspector and in the event that there may be a position better suited than what I may come up with now for the bathroom or for the, the changing room. In terms of the sign, it was, uh, it was agreed at last meeting that I would attempt to dim the brightness of the sign so that we could go out and determine if that brightness was appropriate for the future. I think in terms of what we agreed to with the fencing, the fencing takes care of the issue of any lighting spilling over onto the residential property next door. I still will agree to dim the property. My problem in getting a sign company to come out and put in what they call a, a, a it's some type of 3M product that's a, a, a membrane to go inside of the panel on the sign to, to dim the light. 
I wasn't able to get them out to the property. They've had a backlog of work and were not able to come out to the property to dim that. I was told by a lighting company that they really didn't have fluorescent tubes that could dim that appropriately. Um, and I was told also that taking out a couple of fluorescent tubes would keep the other ones from working uh, because it's in a series. So the only way that seemed feasible to dim the, the brightness was to put this, uh, and I'm not even sure what it is, but it's some kind of membrane inside the, the panel to do that. So that's why I didn't call and, and um, have everyone come back to, to see what the dimness looked like. And one final issue on the width of the driveway, it was stated in the T. Y. Lynn letter uh, to you that I believe is in your package, that the driveway was supposed to be 20 feet 6 inches as approved by the planning board when the original site plan was approved, and that's incorrect. The letter that I had from the planning board at that time stated that the driveway had to be at least 18 feet wide. It was constructed to be 20 feet 6 inches. With the grass growing in on both sides, it has overlapped the driveway just a little bit on each side, but it is still clearly at least 19 feet all the way down through. And we did measure that at the site walk, um, and that was, that was proven to be at least 19 feet. Um, tonight, I'm looking for the board to give approval for the site plan request and I'd like to suggest some conditions that prior to receiving an occupancy permit for a fitness center in my building, I would agree that one of the conditions should be that the extension of the fencing, as shown on the plan, be placed on my property so that it would not impede any sight distances of existing tra exiting traffic. And I would suggest that this could be determined by either the Cape Elizabeth Police Department or the building inspector or the town planner, whoever you choose. Number two, that the rhododendrons that are currently in the ground be replanted on the other side of the driveway and at other locations deemed appropriate by the applicant and that three bushes be given to the neighbor to be planted by the neighbor at their expense so as not to obstruct the site views of exiting traffic from my property. That the floor plan number three, the floor plan meet handicap accessibility as determined by the town building inspector, providing one bathroom and one changing room. And that the sign number four at my option be dimmed by means to be chosen by me. And the reason I say this is that, number one, I don't agree with the board that the sign is too bright. I've never heard any complaints from the public that it's too bright. I do agree that under the current conditions that some of the light does spill over onto the lawn next door, but with the fence being extended up to the road, that will be eliminated. And number five, that the, the pathway be constructed to meet the high school parking lot with approval to remove a section of fence from the Cape Elizabeth High School or the school board, um, whoever is in a position to give that approval. Madam Chairman, I believe we have here uh, a representative of the property owner next door, and I'd be pleased to hear. Uh, we would like I'm, to I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. At, not at your expense? Not at our expense. Mm -hmm. uh, it benefits us, not at all. It benefits the applicant. We would like to have the fence removed to the applicant's property line and like to have it turned so that the good side faces our property. We don't want any obligations or agreements to maintain any of the planning or the fence. 
and we don't want to create any easements. And we would like to have the uh, sign, at least a portion that faces the reach property, dimmed and turned off at 11 o'clock. Uh, other than that, uh, from the result of that site walk, uh, I think things are acceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any further board comment? I'm sorry, I... I'm out of order here. I we are short one person. I need to appoint someone else to vote. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to. Um, is there any? You can say Steve could vote twice. He can. Oh no. <laughs> um, Tim or Judy, uh, have either of you worked on this before? I'd like to defer to Judy since she's been on the sidewalk. Fine. Why don't we do that? Thank you. I point to the Lardner voting member on this particular um, item. Board comment. Is there anyone that wishes to say something? Madam Chair, I, um, this, is, this has been a, a, a long review on a site plan. Um, and I guess my only input at this point would be that I would like to keep the conditions as short or as few in number as possible. So when the board considers, um, if they consider any conditions to the approval, um, that they be specific and only those that are necessary. I appreciate um, the spokesperson um, from the abutter, um, even though we are not having a public hearing uh, tonight. Uh, he has, has been a part of the, the, the discussion in the past, so he, uh, I suppose that's reasonable. Um, I, I, some of the suggestions uh, that Mr. Blake made, um, I, I don't think need to be made conditions um, in that I don't think there were any easements intended. Um, I don't think there was any um, required <coughs> maintenance intended. If, if the fence is on the applicant's property, then it's the applicant's responsibility to properly maintain it. Um, which way the, face, the, the fence faces um, may or not be a, a big issue, but I, I truly think that that, um, that should be up to the, to the applicant which, uh, which way he wishes that face, uh, fence to face. Um, the applicant made some suggestions as to conditions. Um, we have some suggested conditions and some of those overlap. Um, again, um, I've, I've read through these here. Um, I would just say that I'd like to keep the conditions, conditions as, as short and concise as possible. Um, in this whole process, we've, we've made suggestions. Thing, some things have happened, some things have not happened. Um, there are still some shortfalls in, in, in the, the, the physical plan itself. Um, part of this is a process of compromise uh, in, in that uh, the whole site plan um, review uh, consists of some compromise. Uh, again, without saying more, um, a recommendation to, to keep the conditions as short and concise as possible. Thank you. Madam Chair. Um, <coughs> regarding the plan, um, could you show on the plan the next time we see this, if we see this again, as to where the fence transitions from six feet to four feet? Sure. And how far from the right of the right of way does the fence begin? There's no measurement on the plan. Do you have any idea how far that is? No. It stops short of that uh, large tree in the corner. And there is adequate sight vision once you pull toward the road from that large tree. And um, you can also see out through the other side of it. I don't know what, what you're looking for in terms of how, what the measurement is from the road. <coughs> it it looks seems to in the past we've had a, a, a problem with <coughs> Possibly things not being done. Um, and it sounds like you are trying to get this thing whittled down to a very 
short list if we could show on the plan where the fence transitions from six feet to four feet does. and where the fence actually it does. goes. It it's does. on the plan. It does? Weird. Yeah. The, um, the six foot fence is shown as a line with dots about every half inch. And then it turns to a line with X's with a label of four foot high stockade fence. I think also s to a certain extent that that will be determined by site distance, which will have to be approved before any improvements are done to the site, uh, in that the, the fence is four feet high and, and site distance is taken from 42 inches. Uh, it, it won't be able to come further ahead than, than ample mm -hmm. site distance would mm -hmm. allow. And it does show by a different symbol, which is four foot. Pick that up. There's a lot of markings in that bundle area. Um, Maureen is if we have some Ernie or someone go out there and determine site distance, will that determine where the end of the fence will actually go? Yes. Uh, typically, the applicant provides that information um, as to how much site distance is available on each direction. Um, even with uh, public access waivers, we've had individuals come in and provide that information. I believe there is a police officer who's trained to provide that information and, and, and has written letters for applicants in the past. Is that all, Steve? Um, okay. One last comment. Mm -hmm. It's always seemed to me, um, having grown up in this area, that when you install a fence, um, to be a good neighbor, you generally put the good side of the fence out facing your neighbor's property. Um, I'm not going to comment one way or the other, but it just seems like that's the, the normal neighborly thing to do. Madam Chairman, um, Mr. Tinsman, I'm sorry to have to take this position in a way, but I, I, though I haven't totally made up my mind yet, I wanted to let you know that my intention is probably going to be to vote against this application, and I wanted to get on the record and say why. I um, congratulate you on your ability to um, listen carefully to what the board people have to say and to respond continuously in what seems to me a half-hearted manner. We get some things answered some of the time. Uh, there are still, as far as I'm concerned, open items that have not been adequately uh, addressed. You've had the, um, actually the, the benefit of a very good uh, attorney, Barry Zimmerman, a very good uh, surveyor, Richard Manthorne, but the um, documents that we have had to look at are simply just not up to par. And the ordinances that we have to review, we have to review on the basis of written documentation before us. It's not enough to have somebody come and say, yes, indeed, I intend to comply with this. What we have asked you for time and time again is not just a representation on your part that you intend to comply, but show us how you intend to do it. Um, I'm still concerned about uh, site distance requirements. I'm still concerned about uh, compliance with the um, ADA. I'm just concerned in general about the, um, the scantiness of the survey. I am sorry that I had to miss the sidewalk at the end. <coughs> I'm only one board member, but I really do want to express my dismay at the um, length of time that this application has proceeded and in light of the fact that we've had difficulty or that the town, that the planning board has had difficulty once before in obtaining compliance with the requirements, I would intend to be very strict in my um, review of this application. So I simply wanted to put that on the record. Thank you. Do we have other board comment? Judy Lardner. Um, I have some questions, I think, for Maureen and then some other general comments. Um, Maureen, I think on two issues, we have a comment by the tan town engineer claiming what was on previous 
recently approved plans and some disagreement on the part of the applicant. What is your understanding of that issue? Um, I frankly have, have not checked the plans recently. I, I tend to agree with the town engineer, but I'd be happy to go back and check them for the board for the next meeting. If you do that, and um, even if you were to find that the town engineer was correct, it, would it be unreasonable on the part of the board? We've been out there, and if we feel that the driveway works now, to maybe make a finding that that was on previous plans? and Cer Certainly not. You, you could go with this. You, I just treat it as an amendment to a previous site plan. So, uh, and you wouldn't even have to specifically acknowledge it by approving this plan and, and having discussed the fact that it's different from before, mm -hmm. um, you, you could leave it the way it is. Okay. Um, with respect to the sign, we had quite a while ago seen a, a proposed change. You were going to change the top panel to reflect the new name and make it dark blue or something. Are we, or do we have to approve any changes to a sign? Um, I guess what I'd like to do is remind the board that um, you're not specifically approving the sign. Your authority to look at the sign comes from um, the buffering section of the ordinance, and that section specifically talks about need to buffer commercial properties from residential properties, and it lists several different things you have to buffer from, um, including light. So uh, that's basically, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't matter how bright the sign was if it was not reflecting onto a residential abutting property mm -hmm. that's in a residential zone. So um, I, I wouldn't, I would never suggest that the board is specifically reviewing the sign. However, if the sign isn't as bright, then there's less reflection of light onto the abutting property. There's certainly different ways to approach it. Either you find a better way to, to, to shield the light from the abutting property or you decrease the source of the light. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think then my comments will be to you, Tom. Um, first, with respect to the fencing, as one of the board members that was on the walk and one who favored the extension of the fence, um, I'm glad to see it on the plan. I think because of past problems, it should be dimensioned out clearly. And I understand that if we need <coughs> some information on site distance first before you can actually locate that, I understand that. But I, so there's no misunderstanding whether dot to dot means a section of fence or what have you, that it's clearly dimensioned, whether that's, I, I guess we could have a dimension from the iron pipe to the end of the fence or what have you. I'd like to see that clearly on the plan. Um, actually, I did have one more comment or question then for me, Maureen. On the whole issue of floor plan, I am one of the board members who raised that wanting to see it. I was concerned that there were two uh, dressing rooms or changing rooms and there wasn't a bathroom listed. You said we had th certainly the right to review the floor plan. Would we be remiss if we depended on the code enforcement officer or, or the building inspector to making sure that the floor plan does meet um, handicap accessibility requirements and plumbing requirements? I mean, that's what he looks at. But do we have to, f to find that the floor plan is adequate? I believe that the board had requested uh, to see the floor plan because there were questions about the proposed use. Um, if the board has no questions that of, of exactly what is being proposed for this space and your only concern is that it be made handicapped accessible, you could defer all of that to the code enforcement officer. Okay. Um, I guess I'd like to get, actually before I deal with the sign, with respect to the, the fencing and the landscaping, um, I personally think that the issue of where the rhododendrons are is a matter between you and the abutter. Um, it was required on the plans that the board looked at previously that you plant rhododendrons. That survey was wrong. You ended up planting them there. I personally don't favor you um, agreeing with the board's um, agreement on top of that to plant some on the applicant, excuse me, the abutters property, um, or you maintain those, I think that's an issue between you and them. I think the extension of the fence does nicely with respect to shielding the, the um, oncoming headlights and so forth. So I would prefer us not get involved with that. Um, I certainly would favor that the fence, good side, favor, uh, faces the applicant, the abutter, but I don't think I would favor requiring that. Um, 
but with respect to the light of the sign I am really disappointed that nothing was done with that that's been an issue not for all of board members I know but some of us from a long time and that nothing has been done to date really disturbs me I could see acting on this without seeing the, the brightness dimmed but I personally would favor some sort of condition that the brightness be reduced and I might agree to letting you do that through paneling and through this membrane and so forth but I if Maureen could look into this I would also favor a condition of the board saying that Mr. Tinsman comes back to us in two months time or or some period and that we re-review what the sign looks like and if we don't like that then <coughs> again I would need your guidance that there would be some some mechanism that an occupancy permit not be issued although you've advised us in the past that's not a good condition to use but I think we should re-examine this I feel very uncomfortable it hasn't been addressed to date and did you I, I just want to insert we and I'll refer to Maureen I, I believe it in the Jonesy's mobile station we we had a and I don't correct me if I'm wrong if it was a, it was not a condition uh, dealing with the brightness of the lights there and, and, a, and a chance to revisit that um, and, and I think it was actually a condition of the approval with Jonesy yes you, you did have a condition that if you thought they were too bright you they would you would be able to revisit that um, in terms of just a, a timeline kind of condition where you would look back look at it in six months that's a easy condition to interpret I, and I that would be my preferred way for you to approach that um, I can I can tell you from some of the research I did on the sign ordinance that um, quantifying brightness seems to be at the <laughs> cutting edge of technology and uh, there were several people who were willing to uh, interview us if we were able to find a way to do <laughs> it so um, it's apparently expensive equipment involved uh, I would prefer the board basically went out there and took a thumbnail this is too bright this isn't too bright kind of approach I would certainly expect the abutters input because I, I thought I had heard the abutter indicate that there was um, light spilling over into windows and it wasn't uh, and in which case I don't think the four foot fence would address that um, and the final thing I comment I think I would have with respect to that gravel path um, I know I've talked about it before is I don't see a real need for that I know there's something in the ordinance that we have to provide pedestrian access again I would want to see that you get school board approval and some agreement to maintaining that if the if you really need that for adequate pedestrian access I've seen the the um, path between the other parking <coughs> lot and the IGA and how that's filled with snow and I mean that's not maintained so if that is needed and the board feels it's needed we need to see more work on it otherwise um, again we could have some sort of condition whereas if school board approval or superintendent approval was not obtained then um, this could be a very quick item to come back to the board and we could eliminate the path or something but I think it needs to be addressed in a, a way that can be easily interpreted put it that way I think that's it thank you Judy do you have something to say Tim or are you gonna stay silent I'm gonna just run through a few things that are you Tom, you've talked for um, a, a quite a long period of time, and I'm going to say, at least since we've talked a, a partially into this review for this particular plan, about changing the top panel on your on your sign. What's the status of getting that new panel? The new panel will reflect the name of the fitness center when it's replaced. Obviously, I can't replace it with a new name until there's some type of approval given, and and an opening is imminent um, the plan and the proposal you have before you is, is still there and that's with the darker with the darker panel at night so that uh, there's less light coming mm -hmm. through that makes sense thank you um, <coughs> number two have you talked to the school department at all no about the fence no okay no I think that's putting the cart before the horse I, yeah. I'm not sure where we're going to settle on this pathway number one uh, it was proposed in one area to start with and then because of the site walk it was moved to another area and it seems not to be sarcastic at all but every time I've tried to respond to things that the board has asked something does come up to change it at the next meeting so there's a lot of work here to be done to get this type of facility open 
that just can't be done and changed over and over and over until there's a determination of what it's going to be. I think that's where the pathway should go. I understand that if the parking lot is, is plowed, snow may be put in front of it. That's a problem we have here in the winter. If the walkway is to the road beside me, they plow the road also. They plow the road in front of me. Snow is always piled up whenever there's snow. So I don't know where the walkway is going to end up. And to get on to the school board agenda and to go through that process, there just wasn't time between last meeting and the submission for this meeting to get on that agenda and, and to rectify those things. And then to go back to them if it's changed later on. I'd like, and that's why I asked for that to be a condition. Once I know what this board has settled on in terms of what they want to see there, I can go to work and make sure that I do these things once. Now, I respect what Ms. McCaw has to say about the, the advisors that I have available to me, but I'd just like to submit that I don't need people reaching into my pocket spending my money for things that I'm not sure are going to be the final conclusion. And I am a small businessman. I'm trying to start up a venture. I'm trying to provide a service to the town that I think is, uh, is going to be an added benefit to the quality of life in Cape Elizabeth. I'm doing it in a small facility. It's a very small proposal before you. I've been here for 10 months. We started this last September. Uh, I'm in compliance with the original site plan. It took some time to do that because of the time of year that it was approved. Um, I'm trying to hear what you have to say, and I'm trying to work with you, and I think I've been a good neighbor to the people next door. Okay. Thank you for that. I, I have a few other things. One, I, to, to your sort of rescue. Um, the fall of 89 plan was when you moved your um, real estate office yes. there. As far as, I, I, I will go along with Judy Lardner. That plan, as far as I'm concerned, was totally wrong. Had the property lines wrong. Right. Had everything wrong. Right. So whether it showed the driveway is 19 and a half feet or 18 feet is, is, is history. I'll take what I see here. I do know that um, you have marked the length of the fence. The eight foot fence or six foot fence is 127 feet. And the four foot high fence is 26 feet. Technically the only measurement you don't have is where it starts from each end of the property line. Um, it is to be moved. It shows where it's going to be, where it exists, and where it's moving to. Um, as I understand it, the four-foot-high stockade fence will actually be laid in such a way that it conforms with the site distances, which will be worked out with the town. Yes. So that actually may even change, although I'm not sure that it, it probably would. Uh, <coughs> There are a number of concerns I would have with regard to the sign that would be satisfied with, number one, the fences, and number two, the changing of the panels, which could occur, of course, only after you have an approval. Um, if nothing else, I feel sort of uh, a certain safety in that we want to get the sign for the fitness center up as quickly as possible. So I'm presuming that the, the, the substantially darkened um, panel will also go hand in hand with that. Uh, I apologize for looking so stupid for the last nine months, but I thought you had a blue sign that you were changing to a black sign, not a white sign that you were changing to a dark blue sign. Whenever you say it was going to change it by a lot, I'd look at you with, what? It just seemed dark blue to black. didn't seem like it was going to change much of anything. But white to dark blue is, um, I, I think it will take care of a, a lot. Um, I'm, pre I'm prepared at this point. I think I've said everything that I need to say. Um, I think if somebody wants to venture some kind of emotion, why don't we get along with it? Judy? I propose the following motion for the board to consider 
Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the request of Thomas Tinsman for site plan approval of the conversion of approximately 900 square feet of office space to a fitness center located at 349 Ocean House Road be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the applicant submit for review by the town planner and town engineer evidence prepared by a traffic engineer or other qualified individual that site distance will meet town standards with the additional fencing. Two, that the applicant submit written confirmation from the school department that they have no objection to the gravel path and will remove the section of fence and that this be provided prior to any conversion of the site. Um, three, that the um, the sign be turned off at 11 p.m. Oh, it is. Okay, I didn't see it. Then I will eliminate that. Three, the brightness of the internally illuminated sign shall be reduced by the applicant prior to any conversion of the site. The applicant shall return to the planning board at the board's regular January 1993 meeting to discuss the effectiveness of dimming the sign. At that time, the board may require that the brightness be further reduced. Um, I guess that would be it. I apologize to the board. I, I omitted that <laughs> section in this particular memo. We, we well, got the, that. We knew that. Yeah. I would further add then to amend what I just said that um, first these findings of fact. One, Tom Tinsman requests approval for conversion of approximately 900 square feet of office space to a fitness center which requires site plan review under section 19-2-10 of the zoning ordinance. Two, the application was certified complete at the October 1991 meeting of the planning board. Three, the site is adjacent to a residential zone and subject to buffering standards in section 19-2-12 of the ordinance. Buffering shall not create public <coughs> safety hazards. Four, the recreational use of the project will generate pedestrian traffic that must be provided for in compliance with section 19-2-4I. <laughs> Five, the plans must sufficiently depict the use of the site and require floor plans. Six, the plan substantially complies with the requirements under section 19-2-10, 19-2-4I, and 19-2-12. And I would like to um, add one further condition, if I may, for the board. Number four, I believe, that scaled floor plans with locations and dimensions of the bathroom, handicap stall, doorway, and handicap ramps be submitted to the town planner and code enforcement officer for review prior to any conversion of the site. I'll second that. Any discussion? Uh, just a minor discussion in that uh, I don't necessarily D agree with, with the dimming. I, I think that's a real difficult issue to, to resolve. I'd rather see it um, deal with the opaque panels uh, to be installed at the time of, of uh, opening of the fitness center. I'm not going to vote against this proposal um, because of that one issue. You know, uh, I, th I think if, if we can regulate this on a, however the consensus of this board feels fit to, in that suffices the, the the rest of the board um, so be it and I, like I said I'm not going to vote against it because of, of that one issue my intent is, is solely that we have a sign that's more agreeable to the board and the abutter and if someone would like to suggest another approach to that I'm perfectly agreeable may I um, I I, I sense a, a certain awkwardness frankly and and saying before he can even start he has to reduce his sign that's sort of again that's it seems backwards to me we we can condition after the fact not before the fact uh, I feel that as far as and I would suggest that your your motion be amended um, that the sign reflecting the fitness center be changed to the dark blue panel within two months of the certificate of occupancy with the planning board's re right to re reserve, as we did in Jonesy's, to come back and readdress it if we find it's still too burdensome. 
What about adding the membrane that the applicant has suggested himself as being available to reduce the brightness a little bit? I, I'd leave that up to the board. I, I think that you're going to find a substantial reduction with just the change to the dark blue and the fences. That's my feeling. I, I concur um, that, I, that I think that the opaque panel, <coughs> and having seen a number of them put in place, um, will substantially downplay the brightness. Um, I think as long as we reserve the, the right of the board to revisit it w within a certain period of time, I think, think that's all we can ask for. Could I suggest then that you retain that wording but add my language about revisiting in January 1993? I, I don't want to leave it open-ended, and if, if he comes back and we all like that, fine, but I really hate... I was, the applicant, I mean the abutter, I keep confusing the two, w was very concerned. We've talked about this since he first came before us and I, I feel uncomfortable. I've never seen this panel used when you're talking about a small proportion of the sign to a larger proportion that will stay white. And I think that's where you get most of the spillover is from the vast expanseness of white. It's not going to change that much. I certainly agree that he could start with that approach. I might just suggest, suggest that we add the verbs that, that the planning board um, can revisit the issue of sign brightness uh, during a period not to exceed um, one year after the implementation of the opaque panel. May I clarify something? When you're talking about the opaque panel, do you mean the dark blue one? The or dark the blue that turns black at night. Yes, that one. Okay, that's what I mean. Thank you. I would agree That's fine. With that. Can anyone reiterate that? I, I guess I have a question. Sure. So you're requiring that within two months after the issuance of the certificate of occupancy, you're requiring this applicant to return to the board? No. I am requiring that he change his sign. Reflecting this should make sense. It'll have his fitness center. Does that make sense? I'm asking the applicant, this two months after you get a certificate of occupancy for the fitness center, do you foresee changing your sign to reflect that you have a fitness center? No pun intended. I, I plan on changing that to reflect the change. Almost immediately. At, at the time that we open it up. Which would be certificate of occupancy. Yes. Yes. So I think that at two months, we give him two months to change the sign from the time he gets a certificate of occupancy and then revisit it within six months or a year. Six months, a I think. A period not to exceed. I'm not sorry. to exceed six months. And again, w would, would this be a requirement that the applicant return or that the board would just place this item on the agenda? S see, that was my intent. Uh, we said he had to come back because what if I personally think it needs to be revisited? What is the mechanism for me saying, let's get Tom Tinsman back here? if we have an agenda date, and if you want it to be a year, I don't have a problem, right. but I'd like to have a mechanism for reviewing it. How, do, how does it state with Jonesy's? It, it's very general. It just says if something. We don't like I don't it, have the wording in, in front of me. It, it, it's a little, I'm glad it didn't have to be enforced. <laughs> I'm hoping this one either. <laughs> um, could you read back this morning what you have Just right now? I, I think the, the most recent, um, which is based on, on the chair's uh, recommendation, and I'd be happy to change it, is that the condition three would be that, uh, that the brightness uh, would be reduced within two months after the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, and that the planning board would revisit the issue of sign brightness for a period not, uh, within a period not to exceed six months from the date of occupancy. I think the one change I would say that, that change the word brightness, I mean, it's not a brightness issue, well, it's a brightness issue, but it's, it's a case of the, the opaque panel being installed within two months. Yeah, that's <coughs> the blue panel. Right. Okay, so you yeah. yeah. losing any um, choice as to having maybe possibly fill the membrane installed in the lower portion of the well, I'm at this point, I'm wondering what our vehicle would be for returning to it. Could we... I don't think the opaque panel is the problem. I think it's the reader part of the sign that's the problem for the neighbor next door. 
can I, since it's my motion, can I make, sure. redefine yes. that? Please and, do. And I think I'm going to stick with it. Um, that the applicant shall install the um, top opaque panel as proposed on the plan, or I don't know what mm -hmm. to call that. Interior application. And install a, um, for lack of a better term, a dimming membrane within two months of issuance of the occupancy permit. The applicant shall return to the board at the board's regular January 1993 meeting to discuss the effectiveness of these measures. A discussion on that? I guess much clearer. Okay, which means that if he wants to take the membrane out, he'll have to come back and talk to us about it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. that's the deal. Could I make a suggestion also? Yes. That okay. at some point the board determined that there is a brightness issue here. We've gone on hearsay to this point that the sign is a bright sign and it shines in the windows. I walked along the board of the property and the border of the house with the representative next door we could not see the sign from the first floor windows now we were told at the site walk that it does shine in some of the upper windows on the back of the house um, I'd like to ascertain that number one number two is the sign is shut off at night when people are in those rooms <coughs> shut off at 11 o'clock um, so I'd, I'd like something behind what is behind behind the issue of the brightness. I mean, I'm, I'm volunteering to do this, number one, but number two, if it is going to be an issue, I'd like to know and, and assert that it is an issue. Okay. Judy Larkin. Um, I'd like to address that. First, the, the notion of the opaque panel, was that your, um, that was your proposal? Yes. I had never heard of these membranes either, and that was something that you brought up. Um, I could say that we would not be in this position if we had done some dimming or some other things that the board had requested before and I, I don't feel very comfortable with this approach but I just assume would like to get you off your off the agenda and get you going and I think <coughs> this is a very fair way of dealing with this if you honestly did not think that brightness really was a legitimate concern we have had months to determine that and I think it is a concern and I think this is a very a fair way of addressing it and allowing you to proceed and I agree with that but if you remember back at the beginning, it was some of the board's members' opinion that the sign needed to be replaced and taken down and replaced mm -hmm. with a different sign. Um, it took us three months to get over that issue. And it was my coming back to you and, and, and suggesting these changes to dim it to take care of the problem. Um, okay. So um, I think we're ready to, to vote. Mm -hmm. I'm just Yes, Randy, if you want to one more time. I, I'm I really don't think this is a, a public hearing situation at all. It's, it's not a public hearing, but I just wanted one comment, which has sort of plagued the project from the prior application, and that is the lack of performance by Mr. Tinsman Pat. And I hear what you're trying to do. I'd like to move his application along. If you refer to the file, you'll have a uh, October 16, 1990 letter that I wrote to Jerry Daigle regarding all the problems that were not performed under the prior mm -hmm. Uh, approval. I'd like to move this along. I just want a mechanism in place. Mr. Tim's been performed in a reasonable amount of time, leaving a, a long window <coughs> for looking at the sign and no mechanism to bring it back concerns me. And, and not having some timetables in place concerns us also. Thank you. We have a motion. We've amended, re amended, removed. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor of the application of the motion as stated, amended, and seconded, signify by raising your right hands. All those opposed? It passes four to one. Ms. McKay, voting in the negative. Thank you. Okay. It's 10-1.
1030. Um, the planning board rules are that we do not take new matters after 10 o'clock unless the board suspends that particular rule. We have three matters of new business. We have a petty public access waiver, Gramsci wetlands alteration permit, and the Highlands subdivision. I'm going to poll the board as whether they should, t we will take or adjourn We'll take the pe petty public access waiver. And I'll start with Mr. Emery, who is here. Thank you. It's a nice time. Isn't that nice? I apologize. Missed a great night. Uh, I don't mind continuing. Well, you're fresh. No, I'm not. I just came from a plane. OK, I'm sorry. Mr. Uh, I, I suggest we take it up. Okay, okay. Mr. Parkhurst? Uh, was the, if it's the consensus of the board. No, I want to know what you want to do. I, not okay, thank you. I would prefer not to because I turn into a pumpkin about this time. But I will if the board, if it's the wish of the board. Okay. Okay. Four, four, and <coughs> two against, and I'm going to abstain again because I'm a chicken. We will go ahead with the Petty Public Access Waiver request by Maynard Petty for a public access waiver located at 332 Spurwink Avenue in accordance with Section 19-4-2 of the Zoning Ordinance. We have Mr. Petty here. Yes. Basically, here yeah, I guess to answer questions, I have a couple of comments that I think will clear the air real quick so you can go on to, on to something that will probably take more time than I intend to take on the time. And that is the, uh, some way I had some notes, the uh, Maureen had suggested, had written some notes on the basically approving because we'd met all the requirements with the exception of the easement. And the, the area for site on the, on the north side <coughs> going towards Papudic I've gone over there, and the, it's only six foot wide and tapers down to nothing if you, I've got a scale rule here if you want to measure it, but I've measured it, and it goes from, from six feet down to nothing, and I've gone over there with a big crowbar and driven it down a couple of feet in the ground, and it's, it's nothing but gravel, and it, and uh, missed, uh, missed a, the letter from Thailand International states in here that it says in paragraph one, two, three, four, it appears that clearing of trees and rocks would have to be done not only within the Spurlink Avenue right away, uh, but also adjacent private property. And I don't think it'd be necessary to go to, on it, it, the Spurlink right away, which is owned by the state, uh, would allow, they've agreed to remove the gravel and trees that are there. And I think that if you allow me to go ahead and, and, and have the state come in and remove that, and then I can come back, Owen Haskell come back, and I can come back to you, <coughs> and that would be approved. They would, uh, they would be able to get the 350 foot site distance. Does, uh, does Owen Haskell s seem to think that with the removal by the, the, uh, the state within the public right of way, you would gain the 350 yes. foot? Yeah. Okay. Maureen, do you have any idea why, or what T.Y. Lynn based this on? based it on the plan. It shows activity on both sides of the right-of-way line. Mm. Mr. Petty, if I could break in at this point, Madam Chair. Um, I'm, I'm not, I didn't have a chance to drive down Spurling to see exactly where this was. I take it this is uh, as you're coming out of uh, South Portland and into Cape Elizabeth, you turn right on Spurling from yes. Route 77. Yes. How far down is it and how close uh, is it to Papuda? It's basically, this, this is by a stone wall and it's very the very top of the hill uh, at you go by Papudic and you go down does it keep going down the hill and as you come up the hill on your left everything's on your left now Pheasant Hill will be on your left and as you crown the top of the hill you'll see a stone wall there and right at that stone wall the south side of that stone wall is my on my property starts it starts at the stone wall that's on the right side of the road left left side, side of the road left side of the road yeah. it's on the very top of the hill and this is why You'd, you'd, it's going to break open at the, the driveway would come at the very top of the hill so you'd have excellent view of the minute that that you remove a little bit as this Mr. Gobiel's uh, in this in the memorandum to you in the Mr. In Mr. Uh, 
they had been talked to Mr. Gobiel, thought that it was that the uh, that also had to remove gravel and ledge and so forth from the adjacent property owner. But his assistant was out in November of last year when I started this whole process of, of looking at this idea and said that basically he felt the state, it was within the state's right of way to, and they could remove the gravel or the backhoe in probably an, an hour or so in the mm -hmm. trees. Wouldn't it, it's not going to take very long to move the, remove what little gravel it needs to be removed to give them, because if you look at the site plan, you can see that there's only about two feet that needs to be removed to give you the 350 feet. Is that clear to everybody? Or that's the only I, I, I'd break in here. I, I think you have two options. If you want to take the time and, and have only the area within the state right away cleared and come back to us and, and show that at that, that point in time you have still have the 350 uh, f uh, feet of uh, line of sight, um, and that's fine. But the plan doesn't show that that's attainable. Uh, no, it, it shows that, that the, si the, the uh, it, it line of sight requires that you go on to the abutting property to uh, obtain that. The line of sight, you'll see if you measure with the scale, was only going back six feet from the edge of the road, mm -hmm. okay, which is within the right of way of the state highway, what they own. And well, unless I've got a different plan than you do, it shows a triangle-shaped piece of land that, that uh, um, cuts across the abutting property Yes. Um, to get that, that uh, 350 feet. Yes, but the state state has a right to to, to because it, to do that. Not on not on your adjacent property yes, owner's adjacent, parcel. On, the on their own pro property. On the adjacent parcel. Well, that, that contradicts what Mr. Was it go go well, it, it says right here, and it says rocks and trees in this area to remo be removed by the state of Maine, and it points on the map points to that of Maine mm -hmm. by the line of sight, and then and I have a. I have, it's not included in it, but it was included in the material sent to you originally that the, this is Maine Department of Transportation, this is uh, permit 92-6-105, uh, that they will, uh, notes, this is revised, I'll give you a chance to catch up with that if you want, it's, uh, it's a revised 5 cha change of entrance width to 22 feet, some minor brush removal and grading to be done to improve sight distance. And this is what Owen Haskell is agreeing with. Okay, Mr. Petty, the, sure. the problem is, is that this plan doesn't say that. The plan says that there's an area that is partially within the state right-of-way, but probably four-fifths or five-sixths apparently on the butter. How will we determine it's five four? Well, this is this is the property line right here. Yes. And this area is supposed to be removed, and not that's what. No, not the whole thing. Only, only, you're not going to remove the whole. You're going to remove the six feet so that you've got the, the six feet. It, it shows about a three sixteenths of an inch, of, which is really at, uh, six feet at the most. It says that the state is going to remove it, and I have a letter from the state saying they will remove this. Madam Chair. Could I just interrupt for a minute? Sure. Yes, please. Um, having just come from the audience, as a point of clarification, the issue that's being addressed here is that the applicant is suggesting clearing an abutting piece of property of which he has no right title of interest nor permission to do so, as far as I know, as part of making the site distance. No, the state has said... No, no excuse me. Let me, let me finish. Sorry, that's what I'm the plan sorry. indicates. In addition to that, the state would also have to clear part of their right of way. That is, is that a clear statement of what the issue is? Yes, uh, but I'm, I'm looking at something different here now. I'm looking at, uh, if we go down to this beyond the, s the stone wall, we have the grade for site distance is given as 104.5. And if you look at the knoll, which is depicted as being on both the right of way and on the abutter, um, none of it. is up to 104. Well, you have to take that in combination with the point of sight of line at uh, 93.13 feet out at 350 feet. It's a combination. I mean, if you're looking in level, that would be one issue. In other words, if you look mm -hmm. straight across parallel to the surface of the earth, um, that's one point, but you're looking downhill. And, and so 
the fact that the null may only be at uh, 103.56, um, it, it okay. still comes in the line of sight. It's a minor issue also, but the, the grades taken from four feet and, and again, the line of sight uh, for sight distance should be taken at uh, 42 inches, which is three and a half feet. It is at three and a half feet. If you'll notice, it says 101.1, and underneath it, it says 104.5, grade for sight distance, which is three and a half feet. Uh, I'm just reading from the note on the plan that says that the circled numbers indicate four feet above ground. So the ones that, this, well, the, what happens if you look, that's true on the, it's four feet for a vehicle coming down the road at four feet. I think that's what they're implying. But if you'll notice here, it, the grade is 101.0, and the grade for sight distance is 104.5, which is your three and a half feet, which meets the code of, in Cape Elizabeth. Chair, may I? Yes. Um, Mr. Petty, I, I, I don't understand enough about this to certainly quibble with where the clearing will be, but just so you understand what the board has to do, we're looking at a plan, and we're pretty experienced reading plans, and the way it's written, Certainly, there is the discrepancy in where the, the grade for sight distance is read, and that should be clarified. Um, we shouldn't have to look at two different places and see a conflict. With respect to where the rocks and trees will be removed by the state of Maine, the arrow is clearly including and pointing to and ending in um, land owned by the abutter and not in the right-of-way, and if that's an error, all um, the drafts person from Owen Haskell would have to do is clearly delineate the area in the right of way and have the area arrow point to that area if that is all in fact that is needed to be cleared. Um, I don't know that the board is so much arguing what needs to be done is saying the plans don't reflect what you're saying and I don't think someone who is listening if they didn't have the benefit of listening to you and having you explain what would be going I think they would assume something else would be done. Isn't that what most yes, of our comments yes. are mm -hmm. aiming at? Yes. Well, it, 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 I, I want to make get myself clear here. Actually, I only have to establish the line of sight, right? The, the line of mm -hmm. sight is great where it says great for sight distance, the proposed grade at that point. From there, the sight distance has to be established. It doesn't have to go back any further than what they've, they've established by what the cable of the code is, that line of sight. That, that line that goes down the hill and goes north that goes to the top of the plan shows that the line of sight so therefore there's not going to be very much gra gravel to be removed at all. I think our point was though is looking at the plan and the way your draftsman has written it whether what's required or not to achieve that line of sight it does show that the state of Maine is going to be removing rocks and trees in the area delineated that is on the abutters property. That's what the plan indicates will be done, and, and that has to be either corrected to show that the state of Maine will be clearing only in the right of way, and then some proof, may, which may exist on the plan already, that that clearing does in, sh in fact ensure that you have an acceptable line of sight, um, or if in fact that clearing would need to be done on the abutter's property, and somehow we're all misreading this, that you do need some legal right to do, or the state would need some legal right, and you would have to show us that to do the clearing on the abutters. One or the other would be the case, and we have to clearly see that on the plans. Okay, can we go back to the, what Maureen had suggested here then? To save some time tonight, she had suggested mm -hmm. here that, we, that it be approved based on getting a, a, an easement from the abutter could I do that? Could I two things? Could I? I'd like to be able to go to the state and ask them to remove the gravel they intended to remove. Mm -hmm. Secondly, and if that that uh, if they remove what I think I understand they can, and what they've told me they can, then I'll be able to go to Owen Haskell and come back next month with a plan that's updated, showing that the line of sight now is has is. Uh, we can have the 350 foot line of sight. Is that acceptable? I mean, would that make sense to? That's, yeah, do you as, as I understand what you're suggesting, you don't even need any app, app action from the board with respect to that. No. The MDOT can do no, whatever I, it wants to in right of way. No, but I guess what I'm saying is that before I do something, I want to make sure when I come back next month that, that, that you might approve this on that condition. If I can go back with a line of sight 
being approved, there's not going to be something else that's going to delay this another month? Well, that's a fair question to <laughs> ask. <laughs> Let me ask a question along that line, and I hope I'm not getting us off on something. I have the site conditions plan that's dated June the 17th, and what it shows is proposed parcel scheme one, scheme two, scheme three, and then a much larger parcel. And I can't, I, we're, then the written work is talking about two lots, so I don't know exactly what I'm. Oh, this is, the, basically this was done for people I'm, I'm selling, the basically either an 80,000 scheme one, scheme two, or scheme three, potentially selling, uh, and we've got different prices for that, but we're using this plan for more than one purpose. It's to show people who might be purchasing the land that the, what options they have. But none of the schemes include more than two lots? No. No, no, no. It's just it's going to be basically okay. two lots. It's the back lot keeps, it can get it up to here, or you can get another one up to here. <coughs> it just depends on how big that lot's going <coughs> to be. I got it. Because, the of the, because of the critical wetlands uh, that was passed, I can't, I couldn't, I had a previous plan a month ago to come in here, but I, because it was going to be within the 250 foot buffer for critical wetlands, I had to move the property, the, the building site, closer to the road. So what we're looking at is, is okay, I, I understand what you're saying. Did you, have you given any thought to consolidating the, there, there's an existing driveway, I take it on, we'll call it the bottom lot where the yeah. one and a half story the, wood the frame. Present, well, the present house is, yeah. And then you, and you've got a curb cut there, two curb cuts, I guess, for, for well, spare I, wing. I moved one to the right here about eight years ago to give a better visibility coming up the hill. And then we've got just a very slight or short distance, I guess, what would it be, about 20 feet or so from there to the next, uh, to the proposed gravel drive that would be the access to this um, new proposed building that we're talking about. Is there any thought to having the existing curb cuts serve both lots? Well, uh, the, the people I've been talking to for the most part want their own driveway to stay the same. They, want, they don't want it to enter into my driveway. They want the privacy. We're talking about uh, from the edge of my driveway, the new one, to the other drive is close, very very about 38 feet on the on the mm -hmm. line of sight, going along the edge of the road. Okay. I don't know. It's a cost. Yeah, it's, for me, it's a cost factor. At this time, it's a cost factor. No, that's fine. I, it's a consideration. It was something that yeah. we'd want to know why you, you may or may not have done it. I thought perhaps it was because of the location of the new driveway being. Quite frankly, it, make the it, top very, of the it would make it difficult for them to get out of there in the wintertime. That that driveway can be is, is an uphill grade. If they would go over there and make a make a to make a left-hand turn, it would be difficult because it goes up. As you can see, the grade it goes mm -hmm. up very very difficult to get out of in the wintertime for them. Okay. Do you have any other? I'll stay that time. Madam Chair, um, questions. Um, the plan shows a 20-foot. Gravel driver ordinance requires a 22-foot uh, pavement width. Um, I would ask that that, that be shown uh, on the plan um, that is increased to 22 feet. The question I have is: is you have you're proposing 70? The second question I have: is you're proposing 70 feet of frontage. Um, and you're running the the proposed gravel drive, uh, actually to be tired for the last 50 feet, at an angle to Spurwink Road. Is there a reason why you're, you're bringing in at an angle like that? Because there's, and if I were to follow the down along the the straight along the wall, there's a, there's a lot of ledge that would have to be removed. It'd be very costly. Okay. Down where it, just about where it says distance is a big. Well, it says great for sight distance on the map. Mm -hmm. That well, it's the word distance is there's a big piece of ledge in there. Okay, so you offset that. I'm just saying where you typically we, we try to to see that these come to a right angle at the um, the public way. Um, it's not a requirement, but we also um, have a zoning 
uh, ordinance that, that states that, that we don't have um, less than 10 feet from um, an abutting property, which uh, actually we're creating two, uh, the, rec uh, the need for two variances there, um, both when you create the lot of the existing home, you're putting a boundary within 10 feet of the drive, and then uh, the one that you're proposing is also within 10 feet. I was um, told by, if my, I may interrupt, <coughs> I was told by Ernie that, that I could follow the line down, and this is why we went, one reason we went up there. Secondly, because it gives us close to the top of the hill and it will get, get, give better visibility, and it's only at the last, probably the last 15 feet or so, 15 or possibly 20, that I'm, that I'm going to be within the 10 feet. Because this is the, when I received this letter last week, I, that was news to me that, that uh, I had to be within, I couldn't be within the 10 feet of the mm -hmm. abutting property. I, I guess the, the board is just looking at, at, at um, mm -hmm. considering two variance, uh, variances. Um, I really don't have any other questions other than uh, I think the board needs to, or the applicant needs to resolve the issue of, of uh, the line of sight um, and the abutting property uh, to change the uh, proposed gravel drive to 22 feet um, and request uh, two variances for a sideline setback. I concur in Mr. Edsel's comments. Madam Chair. I'm still reading. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm I, I have a question, and uh, I don't know if the ordinance is clear on this, uh, the issue of what's a driveway, what's a street, and what's a road. Um, I'm quite concerned that, that we're providing a 22 or a 20 foot wide driveway to single s service a single family home. To put that in scale, if you go through any subdivision in Cape Elizabeth, that's typically a driveway that goes edge of garage door to edge of garage door to serve two, a two car garage. And there seems to be with a 24 foot wide turnaround space and some wider, at least a 20 foot wide approach to the building, adequate width elsewhere in the property, not having to provide something as, as wide as, as 20 feet or even 22 feet. And if we could reduce that down to 10 or 12, um, that would deal with both the issue of the 10-foot setback away from the property line, save the applicant a little money in asphalt, mm -hmm. and protect the royal character of, of Cape Elizabeth. Um, I, I'm not sure where, where, what that issue is, why this, it, it doesn't seem to be a, a road that's serving two separate parcels. No, it's in, in essence a driveway. Excuse me. The intent is to have one piece of property. I like, since living there, I've had plenty of space, and not that I don't like people, but <laughs> I like my space too. Mm -hmm. The only question I have that pops to mind is the question of um, fire trucks, and I suppose they can get in and out on a 12 foot wide as well as they can on a 22. What's interesting is the 22 feet is is actually wider, I think, than the right the paved area of. It yeah, very well could be. Spring. It's one of those oddities in our, Spring, well, yeah. you know, for the, the, the ordinance says that, that for um, serving one or two lots, then you'll have a 22-foot wide property. If you go over two lots, um, then the, there is no guidance. We is there a distinction between a road and a driveway? Right. There's no distinction between a road and a driveway. The public access waiver standards are, are a little interesting. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Um, to point out, at the end of the, the standards, there is a statement that says the board may waive those standards as necessary. And in the past, the board has approved public access waivers for 14, 16 foot wide driveways. I, I would caution you not to narrow it too, too much, since I, I know the fire chief will be concerned that he can get his fire truck down there. But the ordinance right now defines a fire lane as 18 feet wide. So that seems that at least 18 feet would be more than wide enough. Under the uh, Rosewood subdivision, the fire chief requested that there be a cleared width of 12 feet, uh, travel width of 10 feet. So um, those are some dimensions you may want to think about. Hmm. Well, perhaps the applicant could speak with the acting fire chief between now and next time hmm. and resolve it to the mutual satisfaction. And also, if we could add the town engineer, he didn't have problems with these waivers, but make sure that the town engineer agrees with reduced width. 
I, I raise the issue only in light of, I'm assuming that there's no additional, any plans to subdivide further into the property, and there certainly doesn't seem to be with the alignment of the driveway. There's not room. Uh, I just can't figure out why this isn't a driveway. And uh, I'm, I'm all, all I thing I've done is, is try to go by the codes in Cape Elizabeth, and Owen Haskell has done the same in trying to draw this. I, I think Ms. Emery's made a, a good suggestion, and I hope the applicant uh, pursue that. It would, it would aid the, uh, the setback from the sideline, give you a, a more driveway-y looking uh, situation. I, I, and I and all we request is that the uh, acting fire chief give his, his uh, nod of approval to it. Yeah, I certainly want access to the fire truck. That's while you're here, I don't, I, I'll just bring this up as a peripheral issue, but the carving out of black, uh, back lots in some communities is very much frowned upon. Um, Cape Elizabeth allows it through this uh, public access waiver process so that one doesn't have to have adequate frontage on a public way. Um, however, where you are the existing owner, it seems to me quite unusual to be lauding out a prop. There may be existing conditions that warrant the way that the existing house is sited, but to have 11 acres available to one and find one within 30 feet of the adjacent property line with what is typically the front yard uh, situation that would seem either an easement or a redefinition of the south property line adjacent to the driveway connecting down to perhaps a lower portion of the uh, the the side yard of the proposed parcel scheme one would be uh, more advantageous to both parties I would think I, I don't want to, we're not here to review that. I, I just am, am raising that as, a, as something that, that I would consider if it were my property. The other thing that, regardless, it's, it's clear from this plan that you would it would require clearing on a, on a piece of adjacent privately owned property in order to meet the site guidelines. But I, I want to also raise the issue, not necessarily in, in respect to this application, but this application, I think, uh, brings it to the forefront is that the town is currently looking at street standards and, and this issue in the comprehensive plan of rural character. Uh, and I guess if I were an adjacent property owner and uh, someone was proposing to clear land, have MDOT come up and clear trees in front of my property along my frontage, albeit within MDOT's right of way, um, I guess I would have some concerns about that. And I think it has, it has implications in terms of what happens to the rural character and, and whether or not you have other options in terms of locating the driveway. In this case, unless you were to share the existing driveway, there doesn't uh, appear to be any. Quite right. frankly, safety-wise, I'd rather go, go out with the new, new, new plan is. Mm -hmm. I feel, feel it would be much safer on the breast of the hill. And as far as a, a budding owner, I don't think he's going to object because the only place that he's going to be able to get out onto the highway and meet the 350-foot standards when that four and a half acre parcel over here is ever sold, is is for him to from that come out almost a, the drivers are almost going to come up on each side of the rock wall. Hmm. I don't know if my comment uh, is falling on uh, I'm not in response to you, but my only point is if I if I got home and sat in the living room, kicked my feet up, and was reading the uh, evening paper, which is no longer published, <laughs> uh, looked out my window and saw an M dot crew out there clearing. Uh, mature trees or brush or whatever it was and I wasn't aware that that was happening and it was to the advantage to to a neighbor who was subdividing a, a parcel uh, I'd be quite concerned I mean I, I don't know that if I would have many rights but I certainly would be very concerned I think it's something the board has to be sensitive about the, if you were to go to that site you'd see that there's, there's, I don't think there's any trees going to actually be removed the trees would be on the present property Okay, to the south, so I so that I would have the 350 foot site distance. Mm -hmm. But to the, on the other, about his property, it's nothing but about six feet of gravel at the widest point, narrowing down to nothing. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? We can pull this thing together and um, get to what we're. Tom, because you. Would you would you mind making a motion? Oh no, I'd love to. I'm sure you would. Um, um, incorporating some of your thoughts, I, I think. Um, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the app application of main main at Petit is it? Petty, yes. Petty uh, for a public access waiver for the proposed lot located at 332 Spurwink Avenue be granted, subject to the following conditions. 
One, that the applicant obtain written permission from the abutter to perform the necessary site work to obtain the minimum 350-foot site distance to the north of the driveway. Said permission shall be obtained prior to construction of the driveway and shall be submitted